pressure. Now, according to the Bible, Jesus promised a second coming. And uh, this man, this is AJ, AJ claims that he is that second coming. He is Jesus. He's called controversy, claiming he is Jesus Christ, and that 2,000 years after he was crucified, he's come back to earth to spread the love of God. He's not alone in the studio this morning. His girlfriend uh, believes that she's Mary Magdalene, and she says she remembers watching the crucifixion, watching in horror as Jesus was nailed to the cross. This is absolutely fascinating. Uh, first of all, what, what do I call you? Do I call you Jesus, my Lord? What, what do I call you, AJ? <laughs> Definitely not my Lord. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm nobody's Lord. Just call me AJ or, like, uh, my name is Jesus, obviously, but most people don't feel comfortable calling me Jesus, so I'm happy with that. Do you call him Jesus, Mary? On occasion. On occasion I do, yeah. 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 How does it feel, though, Jesus talking to us today and everybody watching at home and knowing that 99.9% .9 of that audience are mocking you or laughing at you or saying this man is bonkers and she must be as bad as him. <laughs> well, you know, I've experienced that kind of treatment most of my life in the first century as well as the life now. Uh, we, we also receive that kind of treatment. So. And we're fairly used to that kind of treatment. I think when the majority of people actually hear or listen to what we say, then of course they, they have, have a much a deeper interest in what's going on and often they... Is the second coming more difficult than the first coming? Um, no, I mean, no one's going to kill you this time around. I suppose from that hopefully. point of view, <laughs> it's better. Certainly, there are a lot more opportunities in this coming than the, in the first coming. Obviously, in the first coming, we could only spend time sharing with people through the word of mouth, whereas in this coming, we've got things like, you know, technology to share the truth with people, which is something that we do quite a lot of nowadays. Through what? Through Facebook and Twitter and social media? Or? No, um, we only do it through YouTube or through our own website. So mm. we, we only share those things and it's all for free. No, nobody has to pay anything to listen to the YouTube channel or, or to get anything from the website. But there's almost a thousand hours of material. Because there has website. been that accusation, hasn't there, is that, that people pay and you have DVDs and cassettes <laughs> to listen to and books. It's a big cult So that, yeah, people are saying, oh, you're just creating a cult um, and you're exploiting people. Yeah, that's what they say, but the reality is that we do everything for free and we receive donations from people, obviously, because that's the only way we live. We don't have any other form of income. But usually we receive donations from people that are happy with what they're hearing or, or find that it's changing their life in some way, and so they donate. And we just want you to, to listen to what uh, Jesus and Mary are saying today, and if it affects you one way or the other, or you're just going to be completely dismissive from this from the, from the outset, let's accept what he has to say at face value, and let's listen to what the man has to say. But I would have thought, as a courtesy, if you are who you say you are, would you not have called upon the big Christian leaders and said, hello, Holy Father the Pope, just to let you know, I'm here, I'm back in town. Well, my policy has always been, for the last 2,000 years, never to force myself onto people. So I would never force myself onto the Pope or force myself onto a religious leader to have a discussion. If they want to have a discussion with me, I'm very open to having a discussion with them. And have they them. made any contact with you? No, at this point, no, because they view me, as most people do, as some kind of cult leader who wants to do something Do you know how you else. could change that? You could change that by, for instance, these glasses of water in front of us. <laughs> you could change that by turning these into wine. You could change that by, people are going to say, you know what they're going to say, they're going to say, go on then Jesus, impress me, show me a miracle. It, yeah. Yes, well in the first century whenever I, somebody wanted me to impress them I generally didn't, um, but it, the reality is that it wasn't until I was 31 in the first century that I could perform any miracles at all and I never turned water into wine actually, that's a, that's a myth. But uh, I did perform other miracles in the first century once I became at one with God. And as I've said to people nowadays, I'm not yet at one with God again. I've got to go through the same process that I went through in the first century. Once I become at one with God again, we expect, both of us expect to be able to perform what people might call miracles. But to us, they're just the realities of being at one with God. Gosh, there's so much you, I want to grew, talk to you yeah, about. Yeah, you grew up in a very small community in, in South Australia. I did. So when did you believe, when did you think, I am Jesus? Well, I've had memories all of my life, of my entire 2,000 years of life, but it's been very difficult to assimilate them psychologically uh, into my current life. So 
That didn't happen until I was 40, you know, just after 40 years of age. But before then, I've had many... 40 or 14? 40. 40. Yeah. And I'm 50 now, so, um, so 10 years ago, around about. And, and, but I've had many memories uh, from the age of two onwards. But so when I've, you say memories, yeah. what sort of things are we talking about? Uh, memories of my life, uh, of and what happened death? in the first century, my death, yeah. They your were resurrection? Traumatic. Yes. Have people ever said to yeah. you that that could just be a dream? You know, we all have dreams that we've been something, been somewhere, been somebody else. Certainly, um, certainly they could be those things and, and I've spent a lot of time hoping they were actually uh, because I realise that uh, if I said what I'm currently saying that obviously people would generally respond with laughter and derision initially and so of course I, I, I myself even hoped that they weren't real. But, but of course Mary then you come into the picture and yes. you believe you two were meant to be. What do you remember of Jesus first time around? In the first century when we yeah. knew each other? Ah, I remember him as very similar to how he is now, a very humble man, a very kind man who gave a lot to others without expectation or uh, demand upon them. See, a lot of Someone. people would believe he was a celibate, and then there is a theory, of course, <laughs> that he wasn't that he wasn't celibate, that, yes. he, that he would have uh, engaged with Mary Magdalene, um, for instance. Well, he did. <laughs> we, we got married in the first century. Yeah, I was still uh, a bit before then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. But um, to people who, who would be Christian and who would be offended by that sort of belief, what would you say and what is your, what is your message to the world today? You want to go? <laughs> well, um, the primary message is that there's two forms of love. There's the love that comes out of the individual given to another and there's God's love that can enter the individual. And God's love has the power to transform not only the individual into becoming a more loving person, but also transform the world. And, and what we're trying to encourage people to do is to engage this process with God of receiving love from God and then noticing the changes that occur inside of themselves and then sharing that love with others. So that's our primary message. And why have you decided to tell people now that you believe you're Jesus or that you are Jesus? Well, I've been telling people ever since I realised, which was nearly 10 years ago, it's just now there's more media interest, I suppose, than there were, was before. And as soon as I realised that I was Jesus, I felt I had to be honest with people about my identity, so that's what I did. And so, but in terms of sharing the divine truth with them or God's truth with them, as soon as I, ha all of my life, I've desired to do that. And I've spent a lot of my life trying to share what I felt was God's truth. And do you with talk to God the Father? Are you in communication with the Father? Um, yes, but not in the manner that most people believe. The, the language of God is love, and the communications with God have to throw, flow through the connection with love. Okay. So. Jesus, I'm sorry um, to wind you up or cut you off. Sure. Um, forgive me. We head to the news. We've got to do that. Uh, it has been amazing meeting you. Thank you very much indeed. What do you think? Mm -hmm.